So I'm gathering from you in light of all of the different problems that chemotherapy causes in a body that you're not a big fan of that in light of the fact that it makes the body sicker. And if, and if cancer is a result of a sick body and we're treating it with something that makes the body even sicker, there's not a lot of wisdom in that. I don't see it. It doesn't make sense to me. And I think it's it, what's amazing is so many cancer patients, when they're diagnosed and they're told they need chemotherapy, almost all of them don't want to do it instinctively. They don't want to do it. They don't want to be poisoned. They don't want to suffer. They don't want to get sicker. But everyone tells them they have to. And so they reluctantly agree to do it. And for most of them, it doesn't end well. They, they get a treatment or a series of treatments. And there will be a very short window of time where they, the doctors can't find any tumors. And so they'll say, you're in remission. You're cancer free. Yay. Right? We see celebrity headlines all the time. I'm cancer free now after having a tumor cut off. Right? <laughs> but the truth is you're not cancer free. You still have cancer cells in your body. You still have a sick body. You still have a depleted immune system. And it's just a matter of time before new, new tumors form. And it's really sad to watch cancer patients go through this process of, oh, I'm in remission, and they think everything's great, and they can go back to normal life. And a few months later, they have another scan, and there's a new spot or several. Or it's, it's migrated from what started as a tiny lump in one breast is now in their brain, in their liver, spots on their bones, in their lungs. And we know that's from the chemotherapy. It's causing it to spread. It's making it more aggressive, and it's causing secondary cancers in the body. That, that Radiation was, as well. Yeah, that was my, my next question is, do you think that it's related to the chemotherapy? Yeah. We know it is because of the industry studies. The, own, the studies that have come from the cancer industry tell us <laughs> that chemotherapy is carcinogenic. It causes secondary cancers. It's, m there are many chemotherapy drugs that are known carcinogens and listed by the U.S. National Toxicology Board as carcinogens. They cause cancer. So why don't the doctors tell the patients about the fact that these chemotherapy agents that are being used could cause further cancers, or do they? Well, most doctors are good people. Um, but, you know, there's good people and bad people in the world. There's good doctors and bad doctors in the world. Just assuming all doctors are good for the sake of this conversation, they're trapped in a system that pays them very well to do three things, surgery, chemo, and radiation. And they don't have the freedom to use nutrition, right? or what people call alternative therapies, which are really just other non-toxic therapies, right? It's not like they're experimenting on patients with nerve gas, right? Um, but they don't have the freedom to use anything else. And if they do, they risk losing their license, mm. and losing their income and their job. And so I think a lot of, there's a lot of well-meaning doctors out there that are really hoping that a quote-unquote cure is developed soon, right? Because in the meantime, all they can do is prescribe chemotherapy drugs, watch their patients suffer, and eventually most of their patients die. And they have to celebrate these small victories like, well, we shrunk a tumor, yay, right? And they have to find some kind of comfort or job satisfaction in their ability to shrink a tumor. You know, it's not in curing cancer. And it's, so again, I, I can empathize with oncologists because I feel like they probably got into it with very high hopes and good intentions, and it takes 20 years to realize, oh, these treatments don't really work, and most of my patients aren't restoring their health and going back to normal lives mm -hmm. and living cancer-free.